What's life like as a parent with a child with special needs? Now, schools have been shut down for some months now. And as other children get the opportunity to enjoy e-learning and also enjoy the presence of their parents whilst they're learning, what is it like for a parent with a child who is autistic or may have other needs as well? And so today we're being joined by a parent with a 14-year-old autistic daughter. And she will tell us what life has been like for her and how she's managed to educate her child during this time. And so she is Madame Mary Amwa Kufo. Good morning. And you're welcome to COVID-19 360. Good morning. How easy has it been or difficult has it been um, since schools shut down? Honestly, it has not been easy at all for us. It, you know, it was like our whole world came to a complete halt mm. because we went to school on Friday and she loves routine. She thrives on routine. Mm -hmm. So whatever needs to happen next, she needs to understand. And so we went to school on Friday. She knows Saturday and Sundays, no school. Yeah. She actually says that Saturday, Sundays, no school. Then she was waiting to go to school on Monday, and that was when the announcement announcement was made on Sunday that, you know, we're not going to go as a result of COVID-19. Yeah. The, the first week was very difficult. And I think perhaps maybe from us as parents, we're very uncertain, we're very kind of stressed because we didn't know what was going to happen. Mm. So being around her with all these emotions didn't help at all mm. in fact it was during this time the first time i've ever seen my daughter being destructive she actually broke two of our chairs at the sitting room wow this has never happened yes and this is from her not being too happy because she couldn't go to school yes i think for her she like i said earlier she thrives on routine. on routine. So she knows Monday, I wake up at 7 o'clock or 6.30. By 8.30, we are at the center. I go in for my brain gym. I have my tabletop activity. I take my water break at 11. Yeah. I have my second, you know, tabletop activity. 1 o'clock, I come out for break. 2 o'clock, I'm out with my teachers going through the day. 3 o'clock, mommy picks me up. And then we get home. When we get home... 4.30, 5 o'clock, she takes her bath. 5.30, she's having her dinner. Mm. Then TV time, then family time, then back to bed. This has been the routine for so many years. Mm -hmm. And here, suddenly, from morning up to 3 o'clock, there isn't much happening. We were worried around her, and I, she got very agitated, and she started being very destructive. Well, now, I think she's now getting to understand that somehow this is going to be, you mm. know, my life or, you know, it's going to be like this for some time. So she's gradually getting into the routine of being home yeah. and listening to us. But in the first four weeks, it, it was, it was difficult. Easy. Could you not repeat some of, uh, you know, the routine? So if she knows that maybe between 9 and 10 she has to study, could you not at least, um, you know, create that setting at home so that it doesn't look too different from her being in school. Okay, so in her mind, this is not a place I have my therapy between 8 to 3 o'clock, Monday to Friday, mm -hmm. okay? Number two, mommy is not the teacher that teaches me from this time to this time on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So why this sudden change? I think that was something that was difficult. So like a lot of our children on the spectrum, routine and schedule works excellent for them. So for instance... This is my um, um, pet speeches of what she needs to do. Okay. Even if she doesn't have the words, you know, we have some of these in pictures where she just gets to choose, okay? Mm. Now we have all these done for her, things she needs to do at um, the center and then what she needs to do at home. Here we are, all of a sudden, mommy becomes my teacher between 8, 30, 9 o'clock, to two. That was very difficult for her to understand. Even taking the instructions for me during those times was very difficult. Yeah. I had to constantly assure her that, look, we are not going to go to the center now. You need to understand that and, you know, get into the routine. But sincerely, it was not easy. 
Okay. Now, I, I know that you're also a, uh, a parent, but also you have a background in teaching children with special needs. And so what I want to find out, and I'm sure a lot of parents will want to know, so if they also find themselves in a similar situation, maybe you've been able to adjust. How did you manage to get her to adjust to the new conditions and what can they also do? Okay, so first of all, like my husband and I discussed, we needed to be very calm. Mm. We needed to be very calm because everything was so uncertain. Are we going to go back to work? You know, mm. things just came to a complete halt. So the first thing we did that I think really helped us was we had to be very calm around her. Okay. And two, we had to reassure her that regardless, all is going to be all right. I called her teacher to talk to her, and she was very happy. Mm. You know, like, you know, Nanaya, we are not going to go to school in the next few months, but, you know, I'm going to be here for you. She called, and then we had to explain. At a point, we had to get what we call social stories, okay? Okay. Social stories, you know, breaking down what you want to teach her into mm. picture form. And okay. then we had to also assure her. I think after the first four weeks, gradually she, she started getting... Um, another thing we also noticed, which also made it very difficult for us, she was not sleeping. Mm. I think because she was anxious mm -hmm. and she didn't know what was happening, she was not sleeping. Mm. And that was also very difficult for us. So I think the first time, for the first four or five days, throughout the whole night, she was not sleeping. Okay. But again, like I said, we became very calm around her. We also got to reassure her that, look, everything is going to be all right. And then I also noticed that, look, around this time, I have a lot of time, you know, you know, in my yes, hands. Yeah. Why don't I use this time to engage her as much as I can at the kitchen? Mm. Not necessarily going through the academics, you know, okay. but what I call self-help skills. She loves to take a walk outside. So we said, okay, five o'clock every day, she's going to get 45 to an hour, you know, walk every day. She loved that routine. Mm. We got her to help us to wash the dishes, you know, count the tomatoes when I come from the market, repack everything and put in the fridge. Okay. So we got her to, you know, we got her to do more than we used to do before. I see. So she's very much engaged and I think that is helping us to keep her calm. That must be interesting. Let's quickly take a look at some videos of, um, you know, how she's managed uh, to get Nanaya, that's her name, I believe. Yes, to also adjust. And when we come back, we still have some more questions. Is it possible uh, to engage them in e-learning as well? And so take a look at this. We'll be back. Okay. So, so that's Nanaya at home with her mother. And this looks like, um, this is when she wakes up in the morning. And so here are a few things that she does before she... Um, proceeds to the day's work. So you can see that she's watering uh, the, the, the garden at her house. And you're saying that some of these things are what keeps them engaged, at least, so that they can also adjust to the new routine as well. But while she's doing this, I mean, this is just for a period. After that, there still has to be that opportunity to study. Would you advise on e-learning? And if that's the case, are they offering such opportunities um, for students with special needs? Yes, I think you, you, can, you can equally also engage your child. But this is where parent training really comes in. Mm. If the parents are not trained, what kind of activities do you engage your child in? So, for instance, we are still teaching here to um, count and add. Okay. This is a board that we have at home. We mm. got this from our patient therapist, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. as you can see. Okay. And then, yes, so on a daily basis, I sit with her, and then we try to identify the colors. We make some, um, we count this either from the big to the smallest or okay. from the smallest to the biggest. We use, you know, to identify the colors and all that. And then I say, okay, yeah, mm. can you give me five of the knots? And then I'll add three. How many do we have? So yeah. these are some kind of um, academic activities, but it, it, in a more informal way, uh -huh. okay? Uh -huh. Now, also notice that she has a lot of sensory issues. If she has to do something, you need to engage the mind, the hands, more or less the whole body. This really puts, you know, a health set to do that, getting all the inputs okay. at the same time. 
Now, if the parent is not trained, how do they carry out some of these activities? Mm -hmm. Now, with a child with autism, we may have difficulty with um, communication. You may have difficulty with social interaction. You may have difficulty with sensory integration and all these things. Where on the spectrum is your child? Yeah. How much can your child understand? What kind of learning styles do you need as a parent to be able to teach your child? Mm -hmm. Yeah, is very visual and auditory as well. So anytime I need to talk to her, I need to use more of pictures and more of words okay. to add meaning. Sometimes even having to learn a few signs, mm. you know, to teach her. And that's um, sign language. So if the parent hasn't been... Uh, involved in this child's upbringing. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most difficult, you know, um, um, times for them. I just want to put on record that there's a lot of um, uh, resources online right okay. now. Okay. A lot. So maybe this is time for parents to take advantage of the time, download some of these things, and then read to update yourself to be able to support your child. Right. I know a lot of schools are going online. Mm -hmm. My child, for instance, does not like to sit at one place and watch television. As I talk to you right now, she's jumping, going, mm -hmm. you know, up. She will not even sit. But there are also some children on the spectrum who would sit down and would be very glued to the television. Mm -hmm. Of course, you need somebody who would sit next to this child to be able to go through the materials being put online, yeah. you know, so that they can access it. These are very important. Of course, like they say, it's no ordinary time. Exactly. And we need, yes, we need to learn and be able to support them. But let's just say I can't afford this material that you just showed us. Uh, maybe the only time my child gets to learn with these tools is when she's in school. And um, maybe I can't afford regular internet for her to log on to the online sites. How do I manage? What can I do? What, what are some of the things at home I can take advantage of to teach her? Okay, so, so maybe your child loves to move. You can have a ball. You can do a throwing activity. We can do a kicking activity. Um, one thing I did with you, I think about a month ago, was to use a chalk and draw a straight line. And we were, because she loves to run. Instead of walking, she loves to run mm. all the time when you are out. She rather just want to run. So I drew lines on the floor, and she was required to walk on that straight line. In fact, when we started, she was just laughing at us. Mm -hmm. You know, like, what are you trying to do? Are you yeah. okay, mommy? Yeah. You know, but as we did that with her, gradually she she was enjoying it. Mm -hmm. You can throw ball. You know, she can. The child can be at the kitchen with you. You can do not leave them supervised because these are new skills that you are you know, teaching them. Taking them out for a walk doesn't demand you to have something, you know, in place. You can just take five or ten minutes, take them within the neighborhood. Another thing too, you will never wear the mask. I have tried mm. and tried. I haven't given up anyway. Mm -hmm. But should we require to go back to school? Yeah. And she's not wearing the mask. And she's not wearing this because she has a lot of sensory issue okay even when i wear it she wants to take it off mm. you understand and i try to teach her you know we we it's a must for us to wear it to be able to go out so yeah what happens we're not going to wear the mask what, so what? these are things that mm. what about um self-help groups do we have any of them existing and should mothers or parents consider joining some of these groups because maybe it will be better to learn some of these things in a group than individually. Yes, there are a lot of self-help groups, especially on WhatsApp. Mm. Um, we do have the Autism Society of Ghana WhatsApp group. That is ASOC. Um, if you call me, I'll be able to put you on that platform. That's one of the support groups that we have. Parents do share. There's another active group on, on WhatsApp that we are in. That is also called the Warrior Moms. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we have about two groups, you know, of warrior moms. Every single day we share of things that parents are doing at home that other parents can equally uh, learn from. We share our success stories. We share our failures. We share our fears. We share our difficulties and, you know, all that. So it's like a lifeline, you know, in these mm. times. Of course, we try to also reassure the parents that, look, 
you know, this would also be over, you know. Definitely. It's just one day at a time. This is not going to be forever. Definitely, you know, there'll be an end to, to this. How do I manage if I still have to go to work and still manage to take care of my child? What do I do? This is where sometimes you need family and friends. It's extremely important. But they For may instance, not understand you your child as well as you might. Exactly, but this is where we also need to open up. So, for instance, we do have a lot of parents who don't want other people to know that they have a child with special needs. Mm. But you cannot do it alone. You cannot, do, even when we have to go to the center, on Saturdays and Sundays, your child would be with you. I'm sure you have certain social engagements, some, you know, Saturdays or some Sundays where you have to go to work. So whether you like it or not, there must be somebody you can confide in, you know, and open up to them and teach them gradually. Let them know because if it's a child with special needs, every child is so different, mm -hmm. especially if they are on the spectrum. You need to open up to let people know what your child can tolerate, what they cannot, you know. Some children have feeding issues, you know, they will not eat certain uh, foods because of the texture or the smells. If you have to leave this child with a friend or if somebody needs to babysit, how do they feed this child? What do they give this child? My child is on a strict diet, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cannot take sugary food. She cannot take any kind of food, processed food. Her food needs to be very organic. Mm. If I have to travel, what do I have to do? So you, you can't just say that you want to do it all by yourself. You need to open up regardless. And this is where the parent support groups does help. Mm -hmm. You know, we encourage you that you are not alone. Don't feel shy about this. You haven't done anything wrong. Open up. There are some good people around. And yeah. like I was saying, two, three weeks ago, yeah, I was shouting at night. The next day, I had to actually go to my next door and say, look, you heard some noise last night. Mm -hmm. We're going through some tantrums. You know, if it happens like that, Please just keep us in your prayers. Okay. It's not that we are making noise, you know, to get you from sleeping. No, I didn't have control over this. And, you know, the gentleman really understood. understood. And so the next day they called on me and said, hi, is she now? Is she okay? I saw her taking a screw around and I said, yes, it's getting better. You understand? Mm. I am sure that when I had not said anything, because this wasn't happening before. Yeah. So why is this woman's child making noise at night? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they can draw their own conclusion. Yeah. But, but you see, in this case, Nanaya is autistic. What about children with other kinds of needs? Not necessarily autism, but other needs as well. Do we handle them the same way, or is each case peculiar? I think it depends on the child's difficulty. So, for instance, if I have a child with cerebral palsy, where I know uh, movement may be you know, challenging. Mm -hmm. Remember that for a child with cerebral palsy, they may not necessarily have cognitive issues. And so whatever you say to them, they do understand. Yeah. It makes it even easier. But like I said, you need to have a schedule. Don't just call them out of the blue, expect them to learn. Mm. Let them know ahead of time, okay, we're having a free time, but when it's 11 o'clock to 11.30, we're going to have writing time, or we're going to have watching TV time, or we're going to do this activity, counting yeah. activity, or whatever it is. Just plan something. Make it very fun. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Make it very fun. And I'm sure that they would enjoy it. All right. We would have loved to meet Nanaya and probably see her try something. But like you said, she's busy uh, with herself. So maybe another time. If it's possible, we'll do that. But thank you so much, Madam Mary Amwakufo. It's, it's been very enlightening uh, speaking to you. Thank you so And all much. the very best. And I hope that we've been able to help some parents out there. She's a mother of a 14-year-old autistic uh, daughter, and she gave some um, advice on how you can better manage your child if he or she also has some special needs.